Welcome everyone, this is Maxim. Today we will work on probably the most important exercise, scales. We will work on major two octave scales up to three sharps and flats. And I will share not just fingering suggestions, but also some useful tips about the most efficient way to approach this exercise. Let's face it, nobody likes to play scales. I was the same. I remember struggling, uh, forcing myself to work on those scales when I was a student. But you know what? I spent hours working on that, hours and hours. And I noticed how much improvement it brought to my uh, technique. Okay, we are ready to play our first scale. C major scale in two octaves. Let's double check your bow hold. You can also prepare the first finger on the C string, which will be D. Playing pizzicato. Now you're ready to go. Let's talk about basics of the right hand technique. It is very important to check your bow hold. The common mistakes I see from beginners is that they turn the wrist like that or even hold the bow in the fist. Another common mistake is to put a thumb into the frog too far like this. Try to avoid all those mistakes. Your fingers have to be in a fairly relaxed position. The wrist is going to change its angle many times with every bow stroke. So the proper way to hold the bow is going to be looking like that. But remember, there is no absolutely the best way to hold the bow. If you have a good teacher and uh, this teacher is suggesting to uh, hold the bow like that, or any other way, of course, besides holding it in a, in a fist, that follow direction. Our goal is to achieve the best sound quality possible. And whichever technique you use to achieve that is the best for you. In the major scale, the first finger and the thumb will stay in the first position and you move the second finger like that, bringing the other fingers, the third and fourth, to the higher position.
attention to is the angle between the bow and the string. You can see that the bridge is not straight. It has a round shape. This is why each string requires different angle of the bow to make sure that there is a straight angle between the bow and the string. Look what is going to happen if the angle between the bow and the string is not close to 90 degrees. You can hear a lot of noise which bow is making. Now let's try to adjust the angle. You can see that when I'm playing on A and D strings, I'm trying to keep the bow right here in between of those two corners of C belt. And when I play on lower strings, G and C, I'm turning the bow this way. So it is approximately in between of those two corners. So let's play. A string again, D string, G string, and C string. E flat major scale. You will use the second finger for E flat on the C string. And the same second finger to play B flat on the G string. To play E flat in the next octave, we will need to make an extension. So you'll have to do this extension to play E flat on the D string. This time we will need to learn how to do a few new things. First of all, an extension to the half position. We will only need to extend the first finger. In E flat major scale, we will need to reach E flat on the D string. After that, we will play F natural, so the second finger is the whole step from the first finger. Right after that, we need to make the shift to the third position. position on the D string and then we make a shift to the second position on the A string. Let's play E flat major scale in two octaves. Remember to check the bow hold and make sure that you're aware of the position of the bow on each string.
when you make shifts, make sure that the finger you're using for the shift stays on the string and you just slide it to get to the note you would like to reach. This is the incorrect way of doing it. The F major scale will require to play B flat in a half position on the A string. And you will have to make a shift to the third position. G major scale requires no extensions, however, you will have to learn how to make a shift to the fourth position and get back to the first. You shouldn't be afraid of making shifts with slides or glissandos. It will help you to learn it with more confidence and also it will make your playing closer to the human voice. Of course, there will be time to get rid of this slide, so you will just learn to make it with a faster speed. Another way to hide the shift is when you have the shift while changing the ball. So the secret is that you should try to make the shift exactly when you make a bow change. This way, when your left hand moves, the bow makes no sound and we cannot hear the shift. G major 
change of scale. Don't forget about pay attention to the bow hold, keeping the bow 90 degrees straight angle to the string and round shape of your left hand finger. major scale. You will have to use an extension on uh, G and D strings. Also you have to make two shifts on the way up on the A string. And the most important, you'll have to learn how to adjust your wrist and elbow position in order to reach F sharp and ultimately to be able to go beyond that. If you forget to adjust wrist and elbow angle, you will notice that you will be hitting the cello. That will make it very difficult for you to reach higher notes. Let's talk about the bow. How are we going to use it when we play in higher positions? We need to think about the distance between the bow and the bridge. Let me show using C major scale, the third octave, as an example what happens with the bow when we move to the higher positions. You see that I was moving the bow closer and closer to the bridge, the higher the melody would go. Let's see what happens if I forget to adjust the distance between the bow and the bridge. The 
opposite mistake would happen if I put the ball too close to the bridge when I am in the lower positions. This way it will sound sul penticello. However, all higher notes will sound just fine. Nobody would like to hear that. Well, now let's play B-flat major scale. Just make sure that you remember to adjust the distance between the bow and the bridge when you play in higher positions. <laughs> Thank you for your patience and your dedication. Trust me, it will pay off if we learn all those scales properly. Keep working and see you soon.